Hello friends, this is Priyanka. Today we are going to solve a problem on stability analysis and root locus technique. In this video, we are going to understand how to draw root locus for open loop transfer function with unity feedback. Now open loop transfer function is given in the form of G of S into H of S. But feedback is unity that is H of S is equal to 1. So here the given equation or given open loop transfer function is G of S is equal to K divided by S in the bracket S square plus 4. Now for this open loop transfer function we have to draw the root locus. So for that let us first plot the S plane. Now this S plane is the combination of real axis and imaginary axis. Now we will first consider one horizontal line that is the real axis and we will show this with sin sigma. Now we will draw one vertical line and that is the imaginary axis and we will show this with z omega. Now on this real axis this point of intersection of this horizontal line and vertical line is nothing but the point of origin that is zero. Now on the right hand side of this origin we have to show the positive signs that is positive numbers that is 0, 1, 2, 3 and so on. And on the left hand side on this real axis for this point of origin we have to show the negative numbers that is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and so on. Now how to show the numbers on imaginary axis so we have to show these numbers in terms of z. So above this point of origin we have to show the positive numbers that is z, 2z, 3z and so on. And below this point of origin we have to show the numbers that is the negative numbers that is minus z, minus 2z, minus 3z and so on. So this is the formation of the plane. And on this plane we have to draw the root locus. Now we will follow the step by step procedure. So what is the first step? So first step is to find out the number of poles and number of zeros. So for poles we will use here the letter N. So I will write here poles that is number of poles we will use here letter N and number of zeros we will use here the letter M. So this is important. Now we know that how to find out the poles. So for that we have to take the equation in terms of S from denominator and how to find out the number of zeros for that we have to take the equation in terms of s from the numerator now if we observe this here no any equation in terms of s from the numerator so we can say that number of zeros that is m is equal to zero now how to find out the number of poles so for that we have to consider the equation from denominator now we will find out the number of roots. So how many roots are there? So we will consider this equation is equal to 0. That is S, S square plus 4 is equal to 0. So we can say that S is equal to 0 and S square plus 4 is equal to 0. So again we will solve this S square plus 4. So I will take S square is equal to minus 4. Now to find out the value of S, we have to take the square root on both the sides. So S is equal to plus minus under root of minus 4. So we will consider here under root of minus 1. So we will consider for this square root of minus 1 is nothing but Z. So if I take square root of minus 1 is equal to Z then square root of 4 that is nothing but 2. So what is the answer? S is equal to plus minus 2Z. So we can say that S is equal to plus 2J and S is equal to minus 2J. So how many roots are there? So S is equal to 0, this is the first root. Then S is equal to plus 2J, second root. And S is equal to minus 2J, that is the third root. So we can say that for these three roots, that is number of poles is equal to N is equal to that is 3. So here first step is to write number of open loop poles that is equal to 3, number of open loop zeros that is equal to 0. Then so from this number of open loop poles we can say 
that number of branches in root locus. So number of branches in root locus is equal to number of open loop poles and that is equal to 3. So from this number of open loop poles we have to write number of branches in root locus that is equal to 3. So this first step is getting completed. So I will write here. So for if I write number of open loop poles, number of branches and number of zeros then this first step is getting completed. Now we know that these branches that will originate from the poles and ends at zero. So this is important step that is the branches originate from the poles and ends at zeros. But in this given equation number of zeros equal to zero. So we can say that all the branches that originate from the poles will goes to infinity. So we have to write because number of zeros equal to zero. So all the three branches that originate from poles when k is equal to zero will terminate to infinity. When k is equal to infinity. It will terminate to infinity. When k is equal to infinity because number of zeros is equal to zero. So we know that what is the basic rule? That is the root start from poles and ends at zero. But when there is no zero then the roots will terminate to the infinity. So this is the second and most important step that we can say that the branches will start from poles but tend or terminate to the infinity. Now again we will move for the next step but before that we will plot here the number of poles. Now for poles I will use cross sign and for zeros I will use this sign. Now here no any zeros is there but number of poles that we have to show. So how to show these poles? So S is equal to 0. So for this here is 0 that is at the point of origin. Then S is equal to plus 2J. So here is plus 2J. So here is plus 2J. So we have to show. And S is equal to minus 2J. So here we have to show. Now if we observe here the total number of poles that is 3. Now next important step is that we have to find out the points on real axis in such a way that for those points the right hand side total number of poles and zeros that is equal to odd number. So odd number means what? Odd number means number 1, number 3, then number 5, number 7 and so on. So we have to find out the points on real axis. So this is the real axis. So on the right hand side. So right hand side that means this side. On these sides of that point such a way that there is the total number of poles and zeros that is equal to odd number. Now we will take here the trial and error method. So if I take because here uh, on this right hand side of origin there is no any pole and no any zero. So I will take the point in between zero and minus one. Suppose I take this point. So the for this point on the right hand side there are total number of poles that is 3 because 0 is not there. So that is the odd number. So if I take any point between minus 1 and minus 2. So again the same rule is there that is for this point on the right hand side there are total number of poles that is minus 3 that is odd number. Suppose I take this minus 4. So for this point also total number of poles that is equal to 3 that is the odd number. So we can say that on the axis on this real axis the any point in between 0 and here last point is minus infinity. Any point in between 0 and minus infinity is having odd number of total number of poles and 0 on the right hand side. So what is the range that is we have to write the next step. That is the points on real axis for which total number of poles and zeros to the right hand side is odd number. So this range is from 0 to minus infinity. So this minus infinity is important because here sign is minus and here sign is plus. That is here plus infinity and minus infinity. So this range is from 0 to minus infinity. 
so we can say that these all the points on the real axis in between 0 and minus infinity are the part of root locus so points in between points between 0 to minus infinity are part of root locus so if i draw one line from 0 to minus infinity then all these points are considered as the part of root locus so we have to draw the line now next so this is the conclusion and this is very important point that we have to find out for each and every question now whenever there are the branches that terminate to infinity we have to find out the angle made by asymptote so what is this asymptote the asymptote are the lines along which the branches turns to infinity so whenever we are going to draw the branches that turns to infinity we have to take these lines parallel to asymptote so for that we will first calculate what is the angle made by asymptote so what is the formula so angle made by asymptote that is phi to the base a is equal to 2q plus 1 into 180 degree divided by n minus m now what is this value of q so q will we have to start that is q we have to take from 0 to n minus m minus 1 so what is the value of n that is 3 minus 0 minus 1 so 3 minus 0 minus 1 means what that is 2 so here n minus that is 3 minus 0 minus 1 that is 2 so we have to take q from 0 1 2 so value of q ranges from 0 1 2 and what is the value of n minus m so n minus m is nothing but 3 so how i can write this that is phi a is equal to 2q plus 1 bracket complete 180 degree divided by 3 minus 0 that is 3 now when i take q is equal to 0 then what is the value of phi a that is 180 divided by 3 that is 60 degree when i take q is equal to 1 so here 2 into 1 that is 2 plus 1 3 by 3 into 180 degree so next answer is 180 degree and when i take q is equal to 2 then 2 into 2 4 plus 1 5 by 3 into 180 that is 300 degree so these are the three angles that is the angle made by a symptote so this is important point so we we can draw here the asymptote at angle 60 degree 180 degree and 300 degree from the real axis so we will take this horizontal line as a reference line and then from that line uh, I will make here the angles also that is from this line we have to take here 60 degree 180 degree and 300 degree but before that for this asymptote we have to find out the centroid so centroid is the point of intersection of asymptote on the real axis so at which point the asymptote will start that we don't know so we have to calculate the centroid so how to calculate this centroid so centroid is nothing but the there is the formula sum of the real part of poles minus sum of real part of zeros divided by number of poles minus number of zeros so what is the real part of pole now if we observe here the poles are 0 plus 2j minus 2j so this plus 2j minus 2j that is that will on the imaginary imaginary line 0 is also on this imaginary line so sum of real part of pole so on real axis there is no any pole so sum of real part of pole 0 sum of real part of 0 so zeros are 0 so here is 0 divided by number of poles minus number of zeros so number of pole that is n minus n that is 3 but here 0 by 3 that is equal to 0 so we can say that the point of intersection of asymptote on real axis is 0 so this is the centroid that is this point 0 is known as centroid so i will write here so centroid i will simply say sigma or we will say sigma c so we have to give here one notation 
that is for this same rod I will say on this real part it is sigma c. So now we have to draw the asymptote because this is the point of intersection or point of origin of the asymptote. Now for this point or at this point I have to take the angle 60 degree, 180 degree, 300 degree. So I will take here. So 60 degree angle we have to mark then 180 is there and then 300. So for this, so here is the 300 because how to take angles? So from this line, from this real axis we have to select the angles. Now if we observe here, uh, I will show you. Now asymptote I will draw in the form of dash line. So this angle is 60 degree. So I will show here this angle is 60 degree. Then next is 180 degree. So from this line only we have to take 180 degree. So I will show here this line. That is this is the 180 degree. And then 300 degree. So here from this point we have to draw here. So here this total angle is nothing but 300 degree. So these are the asymptotes. That this is one, second and third. So these three are the asymptotes. Now we have to draw the branches. Now asymptote we have to draw that is from the point of centroid. That is the point of intersection on real axis. Now how to draw the uh, how to draw the branches. So what is the rule? That is the branches start from poles and ends at zeros or terminate to infinity. So in this problem all the branches will terminate to infinity. That is important because no any zero is there. So we have to show. And when it terminate to infinity that is it is parallel or it is along the asymptote. So when I draw here or uh, we have to draw one branch that will start from pole plus 2z and it will ter terminate to infinity in this way. So I have to take here one line parallel to this and here in this way we have to show. Then next is second if we observe s is equal to 0 but we know that the points in between 0 to minus infinity are the part of root locus. So I have to take one line starting from 0 and it will move to the minus infinity. So this is also one second branch. Now we will draw the third branch. So third branch again next root or next pole is minus 2z. So from this pole I have to draw one branch that will terminate to infinity and we have to draw one parallel line that is to the asymptote. So if I take here this the line. So we have to show arrow because all these branches terminate to infinity. So here first branch will start from this pole plus 2z. Second will start from s is equal to 0 and terminate to minus infinity. And third will start from pole minus 2z and terminate to infinity. So here this is the diagram of root locus.